of sections in the entire Bible. Wars have been fought in support of and in denial of these events. I'm referring to the execution of Jesus and to his resurrection. Did it really happen? Let's find out. At this point, there should be two questions you have. Why did Pilate simply why didn't Pilate simply free Jesus anyway? And why didn't the Doma send down a couple of legions of shock troops and rescue Jesus? Pilate had no choice but to accept the people's choice. The pardoning of a felon at Passover was considered a decree or law of Caesar. To disobey Caesar's law was to disobey Caesar himself. The penalty was death, no matter who you were. Notice in the below verses how Pilate reacted when he realized there was no saving Jesus. Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hand before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. First needs no commentary. Jesus was then sentenced to be crucified. The Romans used crucifixion as punishment for non-Roman prisoners and troublemakers. It was plainly a terror weapon. Crucifixion is one of the most degrading and painful ways to die. Period. They would let you hang all day and then finally come and break your legs, resulting in death. It was to this gruesome punishment that Jesus was sentenced. Before the prisoner was brought to the cross, it was a custom to beat him as one last form of punishment. This was done by the soldiers, some of whom took quite a bit of pleasure in administering to prison, prisoners. The whole idea of scourging was to not only physically abuse them, but to cause maximum humiliation. You would assume then that the same treatment would be given to Jesus. This is what the early fathers wished you to believe, but as I will show you, it was not the case at all. Here are the verses. Matthew 27, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And, and they bowed the knee, the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they stood upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they, after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. The above verses do indeed tell of the scourging of Jesus. It was the soldier's job, one they could not have avoided. But the first part is anything but scourging. It is an acknowledgment of who and what Jesus was. Notice that they put all his dressings on and bent their knees to him before they beat him. The mocking part was simply added later to further conceal Pilate's favorite, favorable attitude toward Jesus. The purple robe, I have already explained, but what of the crown of thorns? The Romans worshipped the same goddess as the Hebrews, but called her Venus. Her flower was the rose. It is the very same rose with which the Virgin Mary is identified. The flowering rose represents the goddess and was worn by her priestesses. To represent the male, priests were given the non-flowering briar. They, they were worn around the head as a crown. This would sometimes lead to drawing of blood as the crowns would prick the skin of the male priest. The word prick was a slang word used by the goddesses to describe the males in their company. It was used affectionately, so don't get the wrong idea. The crown was worn by males while the high priestess was administrating. This was done as a symbol of empathy and respect for the pain and loss of blood she was enduring. What was the significance of the reed scepter? I'll leave that one to you. See if you can find out where and why where and by whom it was used. Soldiers were not mocking Jesus. They worshiped the goddess Venus, and this man was one of her high priests. 
they were acknowledging this fact so that he would know they had no choice but to obey their orders. The next verse has caused a lot of arguments. So let me settle this once and for all. Matthew 27, 32. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. The, so the Roman soldiers did not want to see Jesus have to carry his cross to the hill. I told you they were sympathetic. Simon simply carried the cross to the hill for Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less, period. Now we, we reach the fateful moment, the climax to our entire story. Jesus began his slow walk down the hill of Golgotha, known as the place of the skull. After being nailed to the cross and raised into position, Jesus cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why has you allowed me to remain? After realizing he will die there, he looks at and thinks of Mary Magdalene. Jesus passes out for the last time. He dies there. His last thoughts, those of the woman he loved. A Roman soldier had been ordered not to let the crossmen break Jesus' legs, but to kill him cleanly with his spear. He steps up to Jesus and sees that he no longer breathes. He thrusts his spear into his heart. A great well comes up from the crowd. Overhead, a dome of ship hangs mo motionless in the sky, invisible to all on the ground. As a sign to those on the ground, they generate a small earthquake and fire weapons that sound like thunder. Everyone looks at one another and wonders and becomes afraid. The end it Thus ended the career of the man called Jesus of Nazareth. Why did they leave him to die a horrible death on the cross? So that they could show all mankind the power that they possessed. They had not spent all the effort and training on Jesus simply to let him rot in the ground. They had plans for him elsewhere. He would be sent far away from Palestine. That, however, my friends, is another story altogether. Let's finish this one first. You thought it was over? My friends, it's just begun. Matthew 28 and 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angels of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him and the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet. And then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. The first person that Jesus appeared to was Mary Magdalene. He had told his female disciples that one day he would leave and then return. He did not mean in the manner he act it actually happened, though. He hadn't planned on dying on a cross in some little country on earth. The Doma came and revived Jesus. The damage to his body...